All right, peace and honor. Um, now I want to go into how the astral helpers bring healing for hopeless ailments with your astral power. Um, I've been getting a lot of testimonies from people who are utilizing their astral powers and winning. And they're incorporating their children so that even makes them more powerful. You know, you got somebody on your team that loves you unconditionally and their thoughts are not wavering from the goal. You know, maybe envy or jealousy, you know, or influence from the TV or the power lines. So it's just, it's really beautiful. It really is. Okay. So without any further ado, there has been thousands of books and articles written about supernatural healing or healing without benefits of drugs or other forms of traditional therapy. Now, this type of healing is generally called divine healing or faith healing. I call it healing with astral power. Healing by supernatural power is a fact. Supernatural power healing is not only a fact, but it can be less and less disputed by scientists, doctors, or other groups of doubting Thomases. Healing takes place by the Holy Spirit, or some may say, we can prove it to you. And that healing comes through the application of astral powers through your astral helpers or by your own self power. People who have been healed by supernatural means describe this process in many ways. And some say that they were cured instantly. And some talk about the intense heat in their healing areas, such as when they do Reiki, they can feel the heat in their hands. Or when their heart chakra opens, they can feel the heat. Some talk about healing over a period of days or weeks. And others talk about healing that makes an operation more successful. It is apparent that there are many ways in which the Holy Spirit or astral powers with or without helpers can heal. There are a few excellent divine healers, such as Dr. Aleem, um, Catherine Kuhlman. Well, I have witnessed that Holy Spirit at work in two of her services and received beneficial healings from one of them. She loves to come to Ann Harbor which is in um, Michigan. The point that I would like to make now is that using magic formula, which is RCC, um, relaxing, contemplation, and concentration, while attending one of the healing services will result in your receiving more positive benefits from your services. Your astral helpers will know their way around because they're, they're infinite. Idealistically, you can handle the whole healing process for yourself or others by yourself. Healing has become a big business and voluntary contributions amount to over $2 million a year um, to Catherine Kuhlman. Hundreds of grateful people have also sent valuable gifts for all parts of the world. It is estimated that the value of their gifts, which have been accumulated over the years, is well over $1 million. Catherine Kuhlman has at least 12 astral helpers who do healing by applying the the healing spirit or astral powers. There's nothing to stop you from doing the very same thing. As a matter of fact, Dr. Aleem Bay has done so many healing classes in which his students have helped other people. And it's also invaluable. There's nothing to stop you from doing the same. There is no questions but that the word healing, happiness, and prosperity can apply to your life as well. Catherine Kuhlman, she's rich, she's famous, um, and she's divinely happy in her work. Also, Catherine Kuhlman adheres to old-fashioned, fundamental religious beliefs. She sees no evil in making money or enjoying all the physical pleasures available in the earth's plane. You don't have to either. We have been taught in certain religions to be stagnated financially, but I am so grateful that those bonds are being broken. You have to have a love for clothes. You have to have a love for humanity. You have to have a love for self. And then large amounts of money, will begin to just shower and rain on you. And actually, the spiritual people who are drawn to knowledge should be the ones that are financially stable so that they can purchase 
healing centers and give back to humanity. See, when you make money from your business, you give back to your business. But when you are spiritual, you will begin to make money and give back to humanity. Because there's so much work that needs to be done. Why not have the spiritually centered and the people with their heart chakras open be the givers? Because they have it. No longer poor righteous teachers, but rich righteous teachers. The magic formula that is displayed in this book um, kept me from passing to spirit. Now that's deep. Okay, this is a subtitle. Again, I should like to prove that the magic formula really works. Through my own experience of not dying when I was supposed to, as I write these lines, it has been over three years since I was supposed to pass the spirit. I did realize that his strength was slipping away, and he also had to rest a great deal. It appeared that he had a respiratory problem that would have pulled down the curtain on his present journey through the earthly plane. By the time you read this chapter, you should have several astral helpers, including your own personal physician. I have already told you about Dr. Townsley, who's his personal physician who has saved his life. He was our father's doctor while he was on the earthly plane and was killed in an automobile accident in California. If you do not have a spirit psychic, ask for one. There are plenty available. Most of them are doing research in the astral world. And I'm on page 190. Now, just to pause real quick. I remember when Dr. Aileen died, almost died. And almost died before he almost died. And I remember his uncle coming to him. Um, Uncle Raymond Green. I say Uncle Raymond Green, Uncle Raymond Green. And I remember he told him, he said, I want you to remember to breathe. And Eileen was taking some herbs and he had inhaled the powder. That's why we started putting them in capsules. But he had inhaled the powder. And when you do that, like with the cinnamon challenge, you can actually, you know, suffocate because you're inhaling a powdery substance and it'll go into your lungs. So anyway, he was taking some herbs and held them and almost choked to death. And he was panicking and then he remembered that his his uncle came to him and told him to remember to breathe. So a lot of these stories in this Astro Helpers book, How to Utilize Your Astro Powers, they are stories that you can also implement into your own life. Because most oftentimes we have situations as well. Like looking down, messing with the phone cell phone now but back in the day it used to be the radio or the children or your children in the car and your spirit be like look up and then you keep from hitting a tree or you know a car in front of you um but i digress i suggest that you develop a strong realization of all the money that you can save your spiritual doctors know what they're doing and they use no deadly drugs or radiation treatment that have been done more harm to the physical masses and which is what's commonplace and looked at as normal today. If your spirit doctor believes that you need help from an earthly doctor, then they'll tell you. However, they can go into your um, astral body or your mental body or your causal body and a lot of times remove issues before they implement into the physical body. So that's what he's talking about. How do spirit doctors work? Spirit doctors do not carry a bag or use any mechanical devices. They use no drugs. They write no prescriptions. Then how do they cure? Well, that's a great question. Dr. Townsley used the wall socket in our bedroom to provide the energy for a beam of white light. Now, that's deep. John was too ill to undergo an exploratory operation. After Dr. Townsley visited him, John was up walking around in the hospital the next morning. I really do not know how Dr. Townsley did it, but on our own Indian medicine man, um, White Cloud, they call their Indian medicine man, but you know, most of the um, indigenous people were called um, Blackfoot, you know what I mean? So, or Dark Cloud, you know? Um, but they, um, this one was called White Cloud. And he used a bright cream colored light that enfolded the whole entire body. Now that's deep because Dr. Eileen was just going into that science in the online healing class yesterday. And he was talking about garbing your whole entire body with like a gold light. Becoming a super saiyan. 
you know, which is deep because that's what they show our children with Dragon Ball Z. So I'm just loving this vibration. But anyway, recently I had severe muscle pain in his stomach. That's what he's saying. So he asked Santio, which is that beautiful astral helper, um, to bring Dr. Yoko from Japan. I was in my bed when he came in and I saw him just as clear as day. He was making clockwise movements with his hands over my stomach. I did not feel the hands. Now that's Reiki or Raka, which is what our ancestors called it. But within a few minutes, the pain started leaving his body. Within 30 minutes, the pain was all gone and he felt greatly relieved. Exactly how he did it. They don't know, but I do. He actually used the universal life force energy called Raka or Reiki in order to remove the blockage before it got into the physical body. It, Like I stated earlier, it could lodge itself in the mental plane from negative energy or from stress. Um, it could lodge itself in the astral body, which is when it will become manifested into the physical body. So that's what he did as an astral helper. He removed it from the other bodies. I have been told by some of my spirit friends that these healers use energized mental action images. Now remember, God said, let there be light, and then there was. I believe that these spirit doctors see clearly the changes that must be made. They provide the blueprint for a more perfect condition, plus the astral powers to make that change instantly or within a short period of time. The next subtitle is, if you ever needed to release the God force within you, it is now. Isn't that beautiful? That is serious. Let me repeat that again. That the third party of this magic formula, which is contemplation with the oneness with God, is of vital importance. Stop praying to a God in the sky when God is within you. Y'all reading books like this is empowering. Mother Bacon told you that the God force within you is the greatest of all hidden treasures. I've told you that. Dr. Alim has told you that. Jesus has told you that. Greater is he that is within thee than he that is within the world. Your highest goal must always be the oneness with God. There is no God sitting on a throne up in the sky. That was a lie so that you could be stagnated and manipulated. God is within you. And always has been and always will be through all of your incarnation. This God force or your astral power is the key to health, is the key to wealth, is the key to happiness. Okay, another subtitle is another first for the magic formula. Jackie Susan, who has been helping um Helping him write this book really put the pressure on him to include the true accounts of Dr. Townsley helping a cat deliver her seven babies. Well, said Jackie. Every every veterinarian will want to learn how astral power can save the lives or cure the pets that mean so much to their owners. Surely your doctor must know that astral power is available for every form of life. How well do I remember visiting an animal clinic one day where the people, you know what, I just, that's why I just went into a daze because it was like, I just remembered I had a cat and she was pregnant and I was so, I was so, um, argumentative back then. It was like, I was so, and this is difficult to say, it's sort of like embarrassing, but the cat has scratched my leg trying to get me to stay because she was having her baby and I was offended like, wait a minute, don't be scratching me. You know, and I'm just sitting up here thinking about that, you know. I'm telling you, it's like we constantly are learning from issues, experiences that are past and present. And I just want to just be grateful for that recollection because I am not perfect. However, I have learned. I have learned a lot. I've come a long way. So I digress. Surely your doctors must know that astral power is available for every form of life. How well do I remember visiting an animal clinic one day where the people with their pets waiting to see the doctor looked like they needed attention more than the dogs. (laughs) Wow. And the cats that were in their arms. They were deeply worried over the health of their pets, evidently. And I have talked to quite a few veterinarians and they all agree that there are many cases 
where they do not know what to do for their pet. Anyway, I was talking to Anna one day and she happened to mention that her cat was about to deliver again. The thing that worried Anna was that every time her cat had babies, about one half of them were born dead. Wow. Now she need to give that cat some nutrients. I had forgotten the cat's name and I will call her Alice. I'm going to call the cat Bosset. To make conversation, I told Anna that I would send our spirit doctors in order, in order to over to see what could be done. I know that she thought I was kidding. Now, when I talked to Dr. Townsley about the problem, his answer was, so it has come to this, delivering a bunch of kittens? <laughs> Dr. Townsley, while on earth, was a general practitioner, so he had delivered many human babies. And I called Anna two days later and asked her how um, the seven new kittens were getting along. She was very surprised and asked me how I knew. I told her that Dr. Townsley had delivered all seven kittens alive. Anna told me that Bassett had trouble giving birth and sometimes took two days to have her kittens. Some of the kittens were straggled during the process. Dr. Townsley made it possible for Bassett to deliver all of her babies within a short period of time. Alice had had several litters since, um, since they had had no trouble. Her difficulties were permanently overcome through astral powers. I fully intended to leave this account out of the book. Now, Jackie Susan convinced me that veterinarians could learn to use my magic formula as well and have a high percentage of success in treating the pets entrusted in their care. If a veterinarian sets up a meditation situation for herself, I'm sure that they can add a veterinarian formula for the spirit side of life to their staff of astral helpers in this way. A healing situation for the beloved pets of thousands can be achieved. The doctors do not have to reveal their secrets. However, I am certain that their business will grow because of this great success in keeping life and health going into the pets that now mean so much in their owners' lives. Jackie just shined her identifying light on the paper and said, don't forget to tell your readers that any of them can bring the healing astral power to their cats, their dogs, their birds, their horses, or whatever they have. In um, Kingfish Pro's case, his fishes, his dinosaurs, his frogs, <laughs> and his dogs. As I write, I generally have my desk radio turned to some relaxing music. A short news summary just came on. The announcers are telling us that the famous racehorse who broke her leg during a recent race between her and the foolish ple pleasure is being buried today. She was put to death because I did not want her to suffer anymore. How easy it would have been for Astro Helpers to have restored this famous horse back to the racetrack, but we know that ain't why she was put to death. Because you can you don't have to be killed um because of your leg. Ruffin, when you come again, we will take better care of you. Oh, well, hopefully Ruffin won't be a horse unless he wants to be. Now, this story is about Jennifer and John, and you know I'm an ad lib. I received a call one day to pray for a man who was near death at a hospital in a distant city. This man's name was John, and his wife was Jennifer, and she called, and she called me. She finally spilled out the details. None of the doctors knew what was wrong with her husband, and his condition was too poor for an exploratory operation. I told her that I would do my best, and I asked my spirit doctor, Townsley, to see what he could do for John. The next morning, Jennifer called me again and stated that her husband was up and walking around the hospital, much to the surprise of the doctors. She seemed to be very grateful for my help. I contacted Dr. Townsley, which you can too. And he stated that John had abnormal adhesions and that he would take care of the problem. Since John was feeling so much better, he wanted to leave the hospital. This he should have done, but the doctors talked him into having an exploratory operation. What do you suppose they found? Adhesions, of course. A few months later, I received a call from John and his wife Jennifer was in the hospital. She was suffering from difficulty breathing. Slow pulse and poor functioning of her entire digestive system. Of course I could help her. 
I suggested that she come to see me. Her doctor told John that she did not have time to see anyone. She believed that the potential for a mass cerebral hemorrhage was present. If that's the case, she definitely needed to take some cayenne pepper because that's what Dr. Aline had. She might sink into unconsciousness any moment. So I alerted Dr. Townsley again and told him the story. He went to work on Jennifer immediately. I gave John the necessary instructions so that he could help his wife apply my formula. This will be a great help to Dr. Townsley. A few days later, Jennifer was released from the hospital and my doctor did not know quite what happened to her, but he was more than willing to take the credit for saving Jennifer's life. On the advice of Oh, her doctor, not his doctor, her doctor. On the advice of her doctor, so the doctor gonna take the credit. He loud, he know what happened. But um, thank you, everyone. <laughs> On the advice of her doctor, Jennifer promised to return to the hospital for a complete examination within four to six weeks. In the meantime, Jennifer made full use of my system. Five weeks later, her doctor became convinced that she did not even need the gallbladder operation that he had suggested before in the sudden illness that brought me into this picture. Now that my book is out, hundreds of similar cases will be cured. So y'all use this. You got boils under your arm or um, um, in your growing area, then call Dr. Townsley so that he can come through and help you. Let's manifest a fixing of this situation because the medical industry has gotten out of hand. Anytime you take a medication that's going to cause your problems to be amplified so that somebody else can have sound economics, that's a problem. This world could be so much better. And what will make it better is the people. The people are outnumbered, the, the hypocrites and the crooks. So let's start enhancing our mental aspects. Let's stop looking outside of us. Let's break these spells. And y'all know they're called the spell of Kingle and the spell of Leviathan. Let's break these spells. And when we do, this world will be a better place. Okay, so now that this book is out, hundreds of people will be healed. Now, I want to go into a, a grateful session. Where I'm just thanking, I'm not going to give any last names, but I'll give first names. And I'm thanking Kimberly for calling because she is very motivating. You know, those types of testimonies where people are actually speaking to their spirit. They're hearing their voices just as plain as day. And it's like inspiring. You know, people are realizing that more feminine energy needs to be in the conscious community. I also talked to another goddess named Makiva, and she is going through the route of Islam. So she's going through um, the Nation of Islam with Farrakhan, and she is enhancing people on that level and on that plane, you know? And she's also receiving the help from them. Now, this sister, she has a barotheri gland and an epiphany gland. So a barotheri gland is... Um, right here. And you'll begin to feel your barotheri gl gland enlarge. So most oftentimes, some people will just feel like a little small bump that have like a concave in it. But when you start enhancing your your um, meditations, your healing aspects such as Tai Chi, Qigong, and your healing aspects such as Tantra, which is the science of sex magic, then you'll notice that your barotheri gland will enlarge. Because it will begin to add more light to your body. Um, also, the your mound that is at the roof of your mouth. So a lot of children, which this is a story sometimes that people can relate to. But if, you, if a child eats peanut butter, most children that don't like peanut butter, it's because it gets stuck at the roof of their mouth. Then they'll have um, a mound at the top. But this goddess, Makiba, she has a mound. She's a son and daughter of God. And when they have dreams, their dreams will physically still be in the spiritual plane and in the physical. So when they awaken from their dream, they're still able to see their dreams. So most oftentimes, these people write down their dreams, which everybody should be doing because it will help enhance your abilities. And most oftentimes, their dreams will reveal aspects in their life which that happens with everyone but these people it seemed like to me caught on it to it at a younger age so um so it is it's a deep science but i um i digress um 
Healing made a family affair. Oh, that's beautiful. The first time that I saw um, Bassett or Alice, okay, no, Alice. She was flat on her back in a Jackson, Michigan hospital. An automobile accident created this condition. Now, remember, you can use the astral protection plan and that will heal you. We also like to put Anubis on the car and read Psalms 121 and 122. Now, Alice was completely paralyzed from the waist down and the doctors gave her drugs. They suggested physical therapy and the hospital bills were costing the family well over $2,000 a month, an amount that the family could not afford. Alice was 41 years old and her mother had four children. Her husband was a car salesman. So what could he do? As usual, we suggested that the whole family get involved. They had heard great things about me and I was their only hope of restoring their mother, their wife, and their wonderful um, companion to her normal self. The doctor said that she would never walk again. He told me, however, that I was free to help. Alice, in any way I can help, I will. I had a meeting with her husband and children in the office to discuss how best to approach the problem. All of them were very anxious to help, so I thought that I thought I taught them to meditate and apply this magic formula. The doctor gave me permission to speed up to two hours a day with um, Alice. Now, y'all know that wasn't speed; it was spend. I used my allotted time to teach her my system. Our plan was a simple one. All of the family would meet at the hospital every evening for a combined meditation and projection of mental action images that pictured Alice back home, back happy, back healthy, and back walking again. Now, that is so deep. I'm telling you, I know y'all have experiences as well. But our experience was Dr. Aline had this boil. And they call it... Um, they called it folliculitis. They said that it was ingrown hairs. And I'm noticing that a lot of people have this issue. Like they'll have like um, like sores that are um, and manifest underneath their breast or in their growing area or under their arms. Um, a lot of times you can see it on people's skin or um, on top of their heads. Um, but Dr. Aleem was stressed out about the right to travel. And it was like we were fighting our fighting the system as well as fighting our own people. So it was stressful. And Dr. Aleem, he takes stress on differently. He was fighting back and forth on um, Facebook with, um, with um, just, just with everybody. So that was embodying in the physical and then also not getting enough rest. Because a lot of times you can be on social media all night long. So wasn't going to sleep, you know, so drinking water but and eating right, but still stressed out. And a lot of it is not what you eat. It's the stress. You know, it's the mindset. Because my grandmother, she's 95 years old and she eats pork and whatever she want to eat. You know, both of my grandmothers did. But they had, a, they had a disposition that was healthy. That was of longevity. So, um, anyway, this is so beautiful that this elder is enhancing the aspects and the importance of meditation. And that's what we need. We have been pr taught to pray but and, and, and visualize the energy outside so that demonic spirits or so that um, the powers that be can utilize our power on the day of the sun instead of us incorporating this energy and empowering our family and building our empires. So I'm loving that he is teaching meditation. Um, Dr. Aline teaches meditation too every Tuesday and every Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're interested, you can take the online classes and I'll make sure that the ability to do so before we go up is in the link. Um, so um, that's just real talk. Since there was not enough time to develop a team of astral helpers, um, I called Dr. Townsley to put together a staff of spirit specialists who could repair the nerves of Alice's back. I was informed that the time would come when earth doctors would be able to repair nerves. The research in the astral world was completed in this field a long time ago. However, each doctor has not yet advanced to the point where they can handle the job of nerve repair. Carefully following my suggestions, Alice's husband and children meditated 
every morning, which you should be doing too. Projecting mental action images of their mother's back being healed and her back home, safe and sound. Her old happy self. I made it clear to them that they must keep all of their thinking positive. As a negative thought came into their minds, they should replace it immediately with a positive thought. I suggested that they make signs and tack them up around their house. Our mother will be walking soon. Astro Powers is working for our mother. Oh, I love this. They incorporated the seeds. Because when you incorporate the seeds, they got all that life force energy just in them, just strong and powerful. And they are, they believe you. They love you. They need you. And they are not afraid to show you. So, oh, that is just powerful. And this is exactly what we can do. A week passed and the doctors saw no change for the, bella, for the better in Alice. The doctors were absolutely certain that Alice would never walk again, but will be confined to a wheelchair. Oh my God. There, this just reminded me of a brother who um, was a con- construction. He contacted us and he has a beautiful story. And he wanted to let us know that in addition to his nurses and the doctors that were helping him, that Dr. Aleem also was a powerful instrument in helping him keeping his mind positive and strong in his recovery. He actually was at the back of the dump truck when all the the concrete dumped on him and broke his back. They told him he would never walk either. But y'all know that ain't true. On the eighth night, Alice woke up during the night feeling intense heat in her back. It seemed that her whole body was extremely hot. This lasted for a few minutes and then her body cooled down to normal. She knew that she was healed. However, she decided to go to sleep again and get a good night's rest. In the morning, she would surprise her family and all her doctors by getting out of bed and walking. Alice was enjoying her surprise plan and she worked out every detail until sleep finally overtook her. When her family came into her hospital room in the morning after that meditation period at home, Alice asked them to round up as many doctors as they could find who had been interested in this case. After all were assembled, Alice pushed back the bed covers and generally arose from the bed and gingerly arose from the bed and walked for the first time since the accident. Naturally, her family was overjoyed, but they were not surprised. They knew that it would happen. The doctors just stood there in disbelief and then quickly left the room for a hurried consultation. The doctor did not try to hazard a guess as to how the healing happened. Alice was released the next day. Not as a cripple, but as a perfect, healed mm, 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 mother ready to go home. And return to her family who loved her so much that they would not let her become a helpless crib. Now that is beautiful. That's beautiful. Woo! I'm loving this. And I'm feeling like the situation that's going on in the world right now is because the conscious people have decided they don't want to be on the third dimensional plane, that they don't want to return back to this physical plane. And we are the ones that are going to make this place a better place. This place is beautiful, but it's fucked up because we got the youngest people on the planet running shit and teaching people and healing people. And they don't have a heart that's open. They are only just dealing with aspects of selfishness, and unrighteousness and it's not and it's not an aspect of holistic thinking now we are the ones that are thinking holistically so we are the ones that need to be meditating on a daily basis and we are the ones that need to be empowering ourselves spiritually empowering our families spiritually through meditation through affirmations so i digress charles nearly cashed in his check When I first saw Charles, his blood pressure was way over 200. His doctor had warned him that if he did not lower his blood pressure, he would die. Now, ain't that deep? A lot of our people have blood pressure issues, too. Now, when um, Dr. Aleem's blood pressure was 211 over 118, I was like, had to go into the science of learning this because I found out because I need him. And I found out that salt 
Okay, so the blood is a pump and it works off of sodium and it works off of potassium. So if you have too much sodium, you'll have an irregular heartbeat. So then you balance it with potassium. And potassium is found in bananas, but it's also found in moringa leaves. It's also found in neem leaves. So it's like you have to balance the sodium with the potassium. So that's why we've been giving away moringa seeds for everyone who orders from our website, DrAlimaBay.com. Because we need y'all planting moringa trees. You see what I'm saying? And they grow quickly and they grow easily. So you can just plant the seed in a pot and just make it, you know, get it to where it's a, you know, it's, it can fend for itself. And then you can put it outside or you can keep it in the house and let it grow. However you do it, just grow them. Um, okay, so this is dealing with Charles. His blood pressure was high. His doctor had warned him that if he did not lower his blood pressure, then he would die. And sometimes you don't die. Sometimes you become a pair of... Uh, um, para, para, paralyzed and you don't want that you don't want somebody to have to change your diaper you don't want to be an invalid where your mate have to take care of you or your children you don't want that so if you can fix it then fix it especially when it's easy so he was put on a diet to get rid of 50 pounds of fat which is not difficult if you are eating for your blood type if you eat right for your blood type then you don't have to worry about extra pounds and different things like that. You'll be in shape. So if you have blood type O, then stop eating like you don't. Stop eating like you have blood type A, where you're not eating meat. Come on, give your body the protein that it needs in order to have the energy that you need in order to fulfill your life's mission. If you are blood type O and you up there eating potatoes and, and rice and pasta, then you dead wrong. Because there are breads that you can eat and grains that you can ingest, but wheat, you will you will have you will be obese. You wonder why you hardly eat and stuff and you overweight and you can't breathe. Your heart is having difficulty pumping the blood all around your body. It's because you eating rice and you eating bread that you ain't even supposed to be eating. Eat spelt bread if you have blood O. Instead of pasta, eat spaghetti squash. And I love growing spaghetti squash because it's so easy. It comes with all of those seeds. You take them seeds out, you put them in a pot, a pot and or outside, and they will go crazy. Then you have your own spaghetti squash supply. You know, and that could be your pasta. You know, um, um, if you want um, mashed potatoes, then make you some cauliflower potatoes. You know, it's just, we have, and it's easy and it's delicious. You know, so this type of thing. And if you're blood type A, stop eating meat. If you are struggling to get the meat down your throat, you got to help your body by tapping your throat to get your meat down, then you're damn wrong. Cut it out. Um. So anyway, Charles, he was put on a diet to get rid of 50 pounds of fat, too much of which was around his heart. Charles believed it in the system that his wife, Nettie, did not. And Charles had to believe in it because he was the one that was about to die. She insisted that he returned to his doctor and forget all of the foolishness that this book was dealing with. Um, let me just answer this phone real quick. Oh, oh, I love when the goddesses call me because we got to um enhance each other. You see what I'm saying? I love I'm true. Whenever they ready, I'll be right there talking to them. But in this case, it's females that are listening to this too. So, goddess, I'll call you back. Um, so, most often times people are in a relationship where one person believes in the sciences and then the other one doesn't. Um, so, hopefully this will be a solution um, in order to get your other mate on board. I'll give some as well after I read this. She insisted that he return back to his doctor and forget all of this spiritual foolishness, this self-empowerment redundancy two weeks later charles car would not start because of a dead battery he tried to push his car out of the line of traffic so that some kind of soul could push his car to get it started because of a dead battery he tried to push his car out and into the line of traffic so that some kind soul could push his car to get it started he collapsed with a heart attack he was rushed to the hospital 
and nearly passed to spirit. After Charles was released from the hospital, he came back to see me. He still had high blood pressure and was still in danger of severe heart attack, which might well finish him off. He told his wife to do what she would do, but that he was going to stay with my program. Today, Charles' blood pressure is 138. His heart is in fine shape. He lost the excess 50 pounds of fat, and he looks wonderful. I often wonder if this stupid people who are so free with their poor advice ever feel guilty when death takes a dear one out of their condition is made worse. I have heard those poor fools say, it was God's will. This is exactly false. God wants you to live a happy, healthy, wealthy life. I shade it at. Yes, you're going to live a happy, healthy, wealthy life. You're going to love this place so much that you may consider coming back <laughs> if you cross over. My second formula makes all this possible. Okay, the next subtitle is Larry would rather die than keep on suffering. Larry was a 13-year-old boy who had suffered from diabetes for several years. Oh. His many trips to the emergency ward of the University Medical Center was getting him down. Now, how I was able to teach my son not to eat a whole bunch of candy and stuff, we would make stuff with the candy. I'd be like, uh-uh, we can't eat these. Skittles? We can't eat these. But what we can do is we can make a beautiful rainbow on the paper or we can use it to decorate the clothing on this little boy you just drew. So we would use them as crafts. And um, we would use um, crazy glue or we would use, um, um, what's that called? The glue gun. Yeah. We wasn't eating that stuff. But he wanted it. He wanted it because he saw that his other friends was. So I'm like, mm-mm. So that's a, the that's a idea. For several years, um, this little boy dealt with diabetes. His many trips to the emergency ward of the University of Medical Center were getting him down. It seems that the standard insulation, insulin treatments that keeps so many diabetic patients going did not work for Larry. And that's deep because they didn't work for Eileen either. Um, they were actually making his sugar because his sugar was 165 and his AC1s was, um, I believe it was 12. It was either 11.7 or 12, something like that. And it could have been 12.7. But anyway, that was high. They said it's supposed to be 4. But when they checked his blood sugar, it was one, um, 165. But then when they started giving him insulin, it was like 350. I was like, wait a minute. This is not helping. You know? So we ended up getting that shit together. So now it's um, it's between um, 80 to 120, um, which is normal. It seems that the standard insulin treatments that keep so many diabetic patients going wasn't working for Larry. Larry's body actually rejected the diabetic treatment that the doctors used. The doctors were at loss as to why. Because they be thinking that their stuff is wonderful and perfect, but everybody knows that it's not. They concluded that there must be an unknown factor that's present. I don't know about that. Larry decided to use prayer not to solve his problem. But to free him from all the suffering. He prayed that he would die. And I feel like that's what the conscious community is doing. He did not want to live any longer. He did not know Larry or anything about his condition until later. It was during one of the meditation periods that I picked up Larry's urgent prayer to God to take him away from the earth. I heard him repeat this prayer at night. Mm. I've heard people say, I wish I didn't have my abilities. This baby sitting up here repeating that he want to die. He 13. I was acknowledged by the emotional appeal that went with it. I am too. <laughs> oh, he said, I'm awakened. I later learned that one of my astral helpers made me conscious of Larry's prayer. That was not the first time that I had been there to interpret a prayer. Last winter, my wife and I took a little trip to Patoki, Mississippi, Michigan, to get the feel of, let me get these water out of my eyes so I can see. <laughs> okay, to get the feel of winter at its best. During my meditation period, the first night before going to sleep, I received the urgent prayer of a woman in that area. 
I had no idea who she was, but was surely had wisely taken her problem to God. I picked up her message through ESP. If you like, or if you give it any other ex- explanation, you care to. Now that's deep because I remember, because like I wasn't meditating back then. So I, so my, it, my, my, um, ESP would come through my dreams. Cause it's like, okay, you relax. Let me give you this lit message since you ain't meditating. So I got the message in my dream and it was like, this dude named Tim Moo has shot my husband in the eye at a conference. And I'm like, hold up. Something ain't right. So, um, so at the time he was, we were talking to Tamu a lot. So I was like, ancestors, is you saying that to trust the brother? You know? So it immediately got interpreted because somebody had called and he was shot in the eye. He had been shot in the eye and you know, he wanted to get vision back in the eye. So I was like, okay. So we were talking about doing Reiki and stuff like that. You know, constantly putting your hand on your eye and stuff like that. So that was deep because, um, yeah, I can see people's, I can interpret people's prayers too. Like I'll receive them too. So, um, so her thought patterns concerned the return of her husband and he had left her and her five children. She had no money and little food in the house. I was deeply moved by the strong emotions that come with her thought patterns. It was a combination of fear, hope, and desperation, but complete faith that God would help her. I prayed that my mind would locate her husband wherever he might be. And my mind finally located him at a bar and um, in St. Marie. A girl was giving him a sales pitch on spending the night with her. They left the bar and went to her room. She removed her clothes and gestured to him to remove the, her clothes as well. I had never experienced anything like this before. Now, this is deep. This is deep. Now, when me and Ali first got together, I was torn because I had liked this other guy. And so it, and it's like, okay, so I, I was dealing with Ali um, as a teacher. And I remember I was with this dude that I was just so attracted to physically. And and this may be too TMI, you see what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's true. And this was at least um, 17 17 and a half years ago. So anyway, um, his name was Grant and, um, he wasn't dealing with the information, you know what I mean? But when we were intimate, I would have this horrible smell and it was like, okay, so he had left, he was in the military. He had left and went overseas. He had went over, um, what's it called? In the field. So anyway, um, when he was gone for two weeks and he had came back, I'm like, see, smell me. And he was like, you smell great. I'm like, I know. I know I smell good. It's because of you. I'm smelling like this. And I don't I don't know what's going on. So when I was talking to Aleem about it, he was like, um, well, does he eat pork? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, that's why. You know what I mean? His semen ain't clean enough. And that's why you having this horrible order, odor. So um, I was able to contain it. Now it won't come out my clothes. It won't all wrap around the house. You see what I'm saying? But when we were intimate... It was coming out and it was like, oh my God, do you smell that? You know? So that's how it was. It won't, it won't all in the elevator with everybody. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, um, I ended up breaking it off with him because his family didn't like me. They could not stand me because I had on my Erica Badu head wrap and they was Christians. And, and plus I was noticing too, that our bodies weren't meshing together. And plus I had, I had access to Dr. I leave yo take a you go when you sit up here in the face of a Bentley. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, long story short, I had went to tell Grant, you know, goodbye. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I had went to tell Grant goodbye. And cause he had left overseas and then just like, we had just stopped communicating like that. And I had me and Eileen, we had moved in together. So, um, when I got back, I think I was gone like maybe an hour and a half and, Eileen, so when I got back, Eileen had, I had went and took a nap. I was exhausted. And it wasn't because of nothing, you know, I was just like transitioning from removing this guy out of my auric field. Now, Eileen, I remember he had on an orange shirt. He still got that shirt to this day. And he was on the edge of the bed and he was like, okay, so you went to go see, um, you went to go see Grant? I was like, yeah. 
And he was like, okay, and I noticed that the conversation, I'm like, look, I just went to, <laughs> so I, I went on and just started spilling it. Because he already had seen it mentally. I was like, dang, you see what I'm saying? So that's what I knew. I was with a God body. And then also, too, I was in school one day, and he had also told me something else, too. And I was like, damn, okay, let me, let me make sure I'm on point. You see what I'm saying? Because I ain't dealing with no average dude. You see? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was saying that he had never experienced anything like it. And I had never experienced anything like it before either. So, so he prayed for guidance as to what to say to this man. And could I really influence his mind? So I delivered the strongest thoughts that I could. And I stated that I was God's messenger and that his wife and children needed him at home. He looked startled at my thought patterns. And he put on his clothes and he left the girl's room. Much to her dismay. The following night during my meditation period, I interpreted this woman's prayer to God again. She was thinking, she was thanking God for the return of her husband and stated that he seemed to have changed for the better. The emotional climate of her thoughts was one of happiness and relief. And she was truly grateful that God had answered her prayers. But to return to my account of Larry, where is he? Why is he right here at the University of Medical Center? His name is Larry Collins. So you should go and see him, said an inner voice. It might have been Virginia or Phyllis, but it doesn't matter. It was an inner voice. And that's the same thing with you. You may not know who your astral um, teacher is or your ancestor, but it's the intuition. It's the it's a thought. It's a voice. And it's, they should be listened to. Larry's p- prayer was channeled into this author's mind so that he could help him. Did you ever try to get in to see a very sick patient when you do not even know them or her and they're not a relative? I wonder what would happen if I told the desk clerk that God sent me an answer to Larry's prayer. That's deep because I remember um, on Shaw Road, we lived in our store because we just were so broke. We didn't have nothing. So we were, we were like, but we had our, we had knowledge. So I can't say we didn't have nothing. And we also had each other. So this was about maybe 16 years ago. No. Maybe 15 years ago. 15. Yeah, 15 years ago. And um, I remember our son, well, my son was just so involved, you know, and I'm like, I'm really proud of him now. You know what I mean? Because we didn't teach him the lies of Santa Claus and you know, we didn't teach him about Jesus. Now he knew about Jesus from my mom, but we didn't, we didn't talk about that. We taught him the truth that God was within. He knew about Tai Chi, Qigong, you know, and it was just a beautiful relationship. I was just so grateful that, um, my baby's father wasn't in our life because we had Eileen. You see what I'm saying? So, um, a little girl was driving. And they wasn't even, it, I don't, they was going too fast on a 35 mile an hour street and they had collided with another car. Our little street was rough, you know what I mean? But we always would pray for the community and so we didn't have a lot of deaths. Not while we were there. And um, so anyway, but this particular death, I remember my son was like, mommy, I need to go up there. He was like seven. He was like, mommy, I need to go up there. So this was like maybe 13 years ago. I need to go up there, ma. I need to go up there. And I'm like, no, you don't. You see what I'm saying? We just heard them shooting and stuff. No, you don't. And then he was like, mom, please, they need me. You see what I'm saying? I was like, no. <laughs> you know? So he didn't go. And I remember I stifled my son with certain things. You know what I mean? And um, and with that, and maybe, I mean, maybe that was the right thing. Sometimes you think back at stuff and you be like, dang, I could have some done something differently, but maybe that was the right thing. Cause he didn't need to see no dead bodies either at seven years old. Now that I think about it. But anyway, um, it took a long time for the ambulance to get there. And I remember just hearing rumors that the girl was still alive, but she ended up dying to the hospital. And, um, Maybe we could have saved her too. Cause now that I think about it, a lot of times they'll kill people that are melanated or blood type. Oh, so they could take their organs, you know, like that sister who, um, whose husband had got killed in Walmart for having that, um, gun that he was going to buy for his, um, for his child. And, um, 
she wouldn't take the money because they were trying to offer her money. She was like, no, I'm suing the dog out of y'all. And y'all may not have done the follow-up to that story, but she actually was found dead um, on New Year's Eve. It was a car accident where the brakes went out. And um, and the guy who was in the car with her, now she got she died immediately, but the guy who was in the car with her ended up dying on the way to the hospital. So, um, you know, sometimes you can be a blessing to people. You catch them before they get on in the ambulance. Um, but anyway, did you ever, okay, um, back to the book. Did you ever try to get in to see a very sick patient or to help somebody who's in need? Did you know that Larry the clerk would ask? No, I would reply. I picked up his prayer by ESP and I knew that I needed to help. He's a very sick boy, so how can I help? The clerk would say, Astro Powers can cure him. And I would reply, follow the red line and turn left to the um, psychiatric office. And the clerk would tell me, I did finally find Larry's father, whose name was Bert. And I told him who I was and that I might be able to help your son, Larry, at this point. His family was willing to try anything. Well, to make a long story short, I finally did get in to see little Larry And he admitted that he had been praying to die. And I let him know that I had heard his prayers. He learned my system and his family cooperated. And within two weeks, Larry left the hospital with his his diabetic condition well under control. Fear of serious disease need not exist. A simple request during my meditation for a complete physical examination for your spirit doctor will result in your knowing instantly whether or not you have any disease or malfunctioning conditions that need your attention. If your spirit doctor gives you a clean bill of health, well then fine. But if not, set up a necessary mental action image to correct the conditions before they get worse. It is as simple as that. It is to it is to be hoped that you have developed complete faith in your astral helpers, whatever their specialty may be. The crowded conditions of our hospitals and doctor's offices indicates clearly that fear and other negative emotions and mental conditions are in control. I was recently talking to a couple who attend church regularly and given a lip service to the fact that Christ is the great physician and that by his stripes I am healed. We were discussing the miracle healing during Catherine Coleman's service. If we could only talk to someone who had been healed, we would believe, said her husband. You are looking at one who has been healed by the Holy Spirit of astral powers, I answered. That's how you do it. I have given you many case histories to prove that you can not only be healed from all diseases, but that you can keep yourself well and free from all doctor bills for as long as you remain in the earth plane. Now that's deep because Dr. Sabi said that too. There is no incurable diseases and I believe that. A day to remember. I recently had a birthday and I knew that my astral friends would remember this day, but I, I didn't realize what a wonderful job they would do. Of course, you are always blindfolded during your meditations, just as I am, to provide a dark screen for your astral friends to work on. Now, wow, okay. I just close my I just close my eyes and um have darkness all throughout the room. Um so that's deep. But I could see that I could see that helping people who may have an issue with um quiet in their minds and you know focus in and getting into their meditation. Matter of fact, I can feel myself right now going into another plane within my body. You know, just slowing down. Right now, I felt um, like maybe a grip on my left arm right here. And then I also felt like a zeal and a zest, like a vibration right here. I also felt like a twinge or an energy right here um so that's what you want to do you want to start noticing as you are slowing down your breath different things that are happening in your meditation okay i felt my um my gagatha area the mouth of god right here open so you want to start noticing stuff like that 
um, while you're in your meditation. And you can also write these things down. It'll help. Um, it'll help enhance your, your connection to your other bodies because we are way more than the physical. And right now we need to be being that. Because right now the veil is up, is lifting and the ozone layer is depleting. And actually, if the ozone layer is depleting and it's what protects the earth from the sun and you have naturally a protection from the sun, then your melanin is going to become a superconductor. And you're going to be more than food, clothing, and shelter. You're going to be more than a third dimensional being. And then therefore, third dimensional beings won't be able to control you. So basically, in saying all of that, manifest your thoughts. Start, especially if they positive, especially if they're on high, if they not, then rub your third eye, begin to tap into your own sacred genie and manifest God and goddess that is within. And see right now I'm feeling chills from just, oh, from just that. So the first, okay, I digress. The first beautiful scene that I was aware of was a huge number in beautiful colors indicating how young I was. Of course, you were always blindfolded during your meditation. I Okay, da, da, da. the first beautiful scene that I was aware of was a huge number in beautiful colors indicating how young I was. Then appearing as if written by a skywriter with the words, Happy Birthday! Aww. This was the work of a beautiful Japanese astro helper, Santio. She then proceeded to put on the screen in living color cameos containing the pictures one by one. Of my spirit friends who were present. One after another. These beautiful cameos appeared like a PowerPoint presentation. And drifted across the screen stage. As each cameo appeared. I heard the spirit say. Happy birthday. I could see their lips moving. And their facial impressions were lovely. There were about 20 presentations for my birthday celebration. And I had mentioned the names of most of them before. How do they produce all of these wonderful happenings? Why? By mental action images, of course. If one of the girls wants a new dress, she just thinks about it, sees a picture of a new dress, and there it is on her. The next action involves compositions and thought patterns in beautiful color, of course. The colors rose was very much in evidence for those color means love and deep devotion. These thought patterns expressed the combined good wishes of the whole group. It was a most impressive and beautiful sight to see. The meaning became very evident since I was constantly picking up all their thoughts. That's deep, y'all. Oh, my God. Imagine getting a birthday celebration from the astral helpers on the astral plane. That's like a dream that you will remember for the rest of your life. That's way better than any gift. Wow. Hazel, a former medium, likes to sing. She has a beautiful voice. I like to sing too. She asked my wife, Mildred, to play Happy Birthday on Oregon. And my wife always plays during my meditation, period. She knows the favorite hymns and love songs of all of our spirit friends. As my wife plays, Happy Birthday to you. Hazel led the song. They probably didn't sing the melanated version. They probably sang, happy birthday. All of their clear, beautiful voices combined to make a marvelous, happy, emotional feeling run through my body. Then I saw all the auras of the 20 pre presentations and the beautiful violet and purples and golds and blues and whites and rose colors blended to make a very impressive sight. Oh, I know it did. Like an aurora borealis. This wonderful birthday greeting ended with a blessing from Mother Bacon and bursts of astral light as Norma Jean sprinkled gold and silver dots of light all over the scene. Just as she is doing this very minute. As I write these lines, Jackie Susan is always shining her white astral light as I write words that meet with her approval. If anyone reading my book does not really believe that this was a marvelous, wondrous, inspirational, emotional, uplifting, glorious, divine, beautiful experience, then return my book and I will personally give you back your money. Y'all, oh my God, I love what this reading sessions are doing. I'm getting a lot of testimonies from people and it's just so inspiring. 
you know, and I'm getting the opportunity to to enhance my own ability. So I just want to thank y'all so much for listening and for meditating with us. And I want to challenge the conscious community to, to, to meditate. Yeah, not only should we be eating right, but we should also be making sure that our higher self is reigning through. No, we're not perfect, but we should damn sure be striving for it. All right. Peace, honor, love, and prosperity. Until next time.